Hey there, I am back with a deck preview for Tales of the Uncursed Kingdom from Plan 52. Now this deck is funding on Kickstarter as we speak, so if you like what you see here, you're going to want to make sure to check out the link in the description where you can consider backing the campaign for yourself. Now this deck is actually a sequel. It's a sequel to the first deck from Plan 52 called Pixel Kingdom. You can see that one here. Great deck in its own right, and it's just like uh, Tales of the Uncursed Kingdom. Both decks are inspired by the stories of medieval kingdoms, uh, but also kind of draw their artistic inspiration from classic adventure video games of like the 80s and 90s, specifically games like King's Quest, which is really a subject matter that sort of hits that nostalgic note to me personally. So big fan of Pixel Kingdom and very excited to check out Tales of the Uncursed Kingdom. So thank you to Andre and Marco, the duo behind Plan 52, for sending me this prototype version of the deck to check out with you guys. Let's get right into it. Now, I'll reiterate again, this is a prototype version of the deck, so there's going to be a few differences. Uh, I'll try to call those out as we go through. Uh, but starting with the tuck case, it's made out to look like a book, like a leather-bound book. Uh, it's definitely a style that's been popularized by King's Wild Project. Uh, Jackson over there has done tons of different book tuck cases. Uh, this one kind of follows in that vein. Uh, it's a beautiful kind of distressed looking leather uh, cover to the book, I guess you'd call it, uh, and has tons of scroll work almost uh, pressed into the leather. Uh, on the actual final version, there's going to be some debossed elements that give this even a little bit more texture. On the, t on the uh, prototype here, obviously, it's just a flat look to it. Uh, and it simply has the name of the book or the name of the deck on the front, Tales of the Uncursed Kingdom. You can see the side binding here as well. So even if you sat this up like a book on a shelf, you'd be able to see Uncursed Kingdom, uh, the date 2021 in Roman numerals there, and then Plan 52 mentioned, and then same design work on the back of the book. Uh, you get that beautiful kind of gold clasp, almost like it's holding the, uh, the book closed here, and it does open from the side. Around the edges, you get the look of actual pages, and then you get some simple ad copy there on the bottom. Now, this one mentions Made in the USA. Uh, I believe the final version of this is going to be made by Expert Playing Card Company, so not Made in the USA. But as you open it up here, you can see the kind of unique shape to the tuck case. So it opens from the side and has these two little points that are meant to match up with the two little clasps. Uh, but kind of a kind of a cool little structure there to it. And on the interior, you get some floral inspired artwork on the inside. So a nice interior artwork on this one. And that's kind of an inspiration of an English rose there that you see that large flower. So very nice tuck case. Love the unique look to it. One small critique, these little points here on the flaps because it's so pointed. I think that's going to have a tendency to kind of get caught and these will eventually kind of wear down a little bit. But overall, still, I think a really cool tuck case and one that once you add those debossed elements, it's going to look really, really nice on a shelf. So there's your tuck case and now into the cards and we'll start with the back design and here it is now there is a story behind the deck and it's specifically following these four kingdoms that are united uh, and so here the story goes like this right there's uh it's the story of 235 knights who all came together to reunite this broken kingdom the four kings then found the four holy grails of the kingdom and then used the water from those grails to revitalize the sacred forest. So there is a little bit of lore behind it. You guys know I'm a fan of lore behind decks and lots of that lore comes into play as we look at the back design. So the back design has the sort of emblem of the kingdoms on the top and the bottom mirrored here. It's a sword pierced through a book and a crown kind of a cool glowing look to it over there. Uh, and then lots of scroll work and detail all the way around. Most notably here in the center, you'll see that English rose with the different shields around the edge. This is inspired by the round table. It's a classic of Arthurian legend. King Arthur, when he formed his kingdom, had a round table for all the knights to be seated at where no one knight would be elevated above the others. And that's why I use the round table. And specifically, some of the artwork on this table here come from the Winchester round table. Uh, it's a famous one that uh, hangs in England. It was 
uh, the paint or the artwork that was done on it was done by King Henry VIII. And so specifically this large English rose in the center is something you'll find right in the middle of the classic Winchester table. So very cool little touch. And as you look at this beautiful scroll work around the edge, you'll see a couple of other details. I mentioned the holy grails that were used to revitalize the forest. So you can see those holy grails in the corners. The green color is meant to symbolize that forest. And one last fun little Easter egg. See this little scroll work here. If you look really close, you'll see this kind of forms a stylized two, three, five. Mentioned that there were 235 knights that brought the kingdom together. So this is a nod to those knights. But not only that, this is also a nod to the fact that the original Pixel King Pixel Kingdom campaign had 235 backers. So very cool little Easter egg to add in there. And I love how it's incorporated into the design. So lots to go through on the back design, but this is really where a lot of the elements of the story came together. All right, now into the extra cards you get. So you get a couple of jokers, or in this case, the fool and the jester. The jester being the one who entertains the king's courts, and then the fool from a faraway land who comes with uh, his stories from afar. A uh, beautiful, bright, vibrant color. This is where you can see that sort of Sierra-inspired vibe, the King's Quest video games vibe. Uh, similar artwork to what you'll see in Pixel Kingdoms, but kind of brought to a next generation. Uh, very bright, vivid, sharp, kind of almost cartoonish, fun artwork. Really big fan of these. You get Jester, Jester on one of them, and Fool, Fool on the others. But love the color palette on this, the bright yellows, reds, and that aqua blue color. Very nice. Uh, now, in the prototype deck, it just comes with a double backer. This is not actually what's going to come in the final deck. There's not going to be a double backer. backer. Instead, there's going to be a pair of diptych jokers, so a third and fourth joker. I'll put a link up here or a picture up here where you can see what it looks like, but it's a diptych joker that depicts that classic round table. So, big fan of that. So, like I said, I get the uh, double backer here, but if you back the campaign, you're going to get that beautiful artwork for the diptych joker. All right, now into the main deck, and we start with the four aces. The four aces are meant to be the emblems of the four major kingdoms of the realm. Ace of spades is the most powerful, I guess the, the emblem of the most powerful, the, the king of the kings, the, the leader of the entire kingdom, uh, but has the large spade pip made up with the leaf work here around the edges, symbolic of the uh, the sacred forest that the king saved. You have that symbol of the realm there in the middle with the sword running through the crown. And then the banners united by 235 knights. Again, that reference to the backers of the first campaign. And then plan 52 card, playing cards at the bottom. Get a nice uh, stylized pip and index there in the corner. Pretty simple pip, but then that index, very uh, interesting font used there. Kind of medieval looking font. Not really sure how else to describe it. Uh, the other three aces have very similar art styles, the large pip in the center, and then the weapon running through the crown in the middle. Each one kind of has a different weapon and a different crown in there. And all of them, of course, have the green meant to symbolize that sacred forest all around. There's your four aces. Uh, the number of cards, they do something really interesting on this. So as you look at just the two, you're going to be stricken by how much empty space there is here. But there's a purpose for that. So each one of these is meant to be one of those four sacred trees of the forest. It mentioned the Holy Grail was used to water the forest and revive the forest, but there were four sacred trees. And so the spades represent the tree of magic. And you can see the kind of green vine work there with the two spade pips growing in the center. But then as you go through the number cards, you actually get to see the tree grow bit by bit as additional pips are added onto there. It's kind of a cool, unique look to it. Obviously the, the lower numbers look a little bit empty space in the middle, but as you see the theme kind of come together with the higher numbers, I think it's really, really cool. And same thing happens on the diamonds. So same style uh, vine work there in the middle, but then the red diamond pips instead. And then same thing for the clubs and the hearts as well. So a very kind of fun concept. I love the little twist on the theme that they added there. I think it's a fun addition to this one. Even if it maybe is slightly less usable than a classic deck of cards, just because those pips in the, in the lower numbers look a little bit odd. But from a story standpoint, I think it's a really cool touch. And then we get into the courts. And so each one of the courts is meant to be one of the kingdoms of the realm. Of course, all the kingdoms are united together, uh, but there are the four different 
uh, kings that rule the different parts of the realm. And you can see the beautiful, bright artwork. This is all the work of Arthur Fast. Uh, he does great work on this one. Uh, a couple of things I'll call out, that kind of cartoonish style. I think it's a really fun, vibrant look. We saw a look at it on the Jokers before. I think it works really well. And for me, again, kind of hits that nostalgic note as you come, as you bring to mind some of the, uh, some of the old King's Quest games that I used to love playing. I also really like the uh, watermark kind of border that's done here. It's subtle, but adds a nice little shape to it overall. You get that uh, kind of scroll work in the background and that really, really faint beige color. So cool look to them overall. And you'll see all of these, while they're truly completely unique artwork, are definitely reminiscent of your classic bicycle courts. They're all holding some of the same things like the King of Spades with the sword, Queen of Spades with the flower. So nice nod to your classic deck of cards while giving you some original artwork. As you go through the rest of the decks, you'll see some really kind of unique characters, facial expressions, etc. Uh, the queens in particular are just absolutely beautiful artwork. There's your King of Diamonds. So really, really like these. I love the nod to the classic cards. Uh, just a fun, vibrant look for me overall. And then into the hearts. Now, if you have the Pixel Kingdom deck, you'll notice that the artwork on these is basically an adapted version of the artwork you see in the Pixel Kingdom. I would have liked it to be a little bit more of a departure, but uh, it is still really fun, vibrant artwork. And where Pixel Kingdom had kind of more pixelated images, these are much sharper, more vibrant, kind of like they're brought to a next generation of video games, if you will. But anyway, that is the deck. Now, I'm not gonna talk too much about handling on this deck here because these were printed by MPC, uh, MPC who does a great job, I gotta say. You know, I, I, they're very smooth handling cards from MPC, but these also aren't the cards you're gonna get in the final campaign. You can expect to get cards from expert playing card company. Uh, in my experience, great handling cards. So I think they're gonna be uh, really nice on that front, but nothing I can review too much for now. And that is it. That is the look at Tales of the Uncursed Kingdom. Definitely a campaign worth checking out. I am myself a backer on this one already. Uh, and if you do like this one and you want to maybe pick up one of the Pixel Kingdom decks, those are also available in the campaign as an add-on. So you can go get one of those decks and sort of complete your set. So that's it for now. Thanks again to Plan52 for sending me the prototype to share with you guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you consider going to back the deck. And I'll see you for the next one.